It's another day on the quiet waters of Cape Cod's Pleasant Bay. They ripple in the morning sun and support a multitude of plants, animals, and people. The bay is made possible by the long curved arm of Nauset Beach. For the past 10,000 years, this barrier beach has protected the towns of Chatham, Orleans, Brewster, and Harwich. I'm sitting on uh, Nauset Beach on Cape Cod, right on the elbow of, of Cape Cod, the easternmost part of the United States, and it's a beautiful day. I'm looking out across an inlet. This is Pleasant Bay behind me. There are seals sliding through the inlet. It's a beautiful day. But if we go back to April 18, 2007, it was a vicious storm. There was one person out on the outer beach. He was staying in a camp about a mile uh, to the south of me. 60 to 70 mile an hour winds, uh, torrential rain, and uh, you know the house was shaking because the wind was, uh, the gusts were really hitting the gable end strongly, and uh, it was a wild night. Yeah. And then tell me, what was it like uh, the next morning? Well, the next morning, uh, the winds still were raging at dawn, and uh, I looked out my window to the east, and I saw that the entire frontal dunes were just covered with uh, wind-driven sand up to a depth of two feet. Uh, and then, and then uh, how'd you get off the beach? I waited till dead low tide to make sure I would have no problems, which was about five o'clock in the afternoon. Hmm. And I drove off. You could see where the tide and the waves had worn down the beach considerably, but uh, I had no real problems. I had to uh, stay on the ocean side right up to the snack bar and go up that way. And now, uh, only four or five months later, it's 2,000 feet wide. Uh, and it's coming this direction. So I'm sitting here beside what's called the Achilles Camp, uh, which is one of these summer camps, and this camp will be gone in about a week's time. So that's the beginning of a real saga of sea level rise, and it will be a slowly unfolding story, but it's the sort of uh, story that, that other coastal communities up and down the United States and all over the world are going to be faced in the next 20 or 30 years as sea level rise becomes more and more apparent uh, and becomes more of a problem. In July, we were able to fly over Chatham to see the changes. To the south, you can see the old inlet that opened in 1987, and to the north, the new inlet that opened in 2007. A broad plateau of sand called the flood tide delta fans out into Pleasant Bay. But it was the camps on the outer beach that were the first structures to feel the effects of all the changes. In July, I visited Russell Broad at his camp on the North Beach. You know, we've had 60 years, 60 happy years here, and uh, I'm sad for my kids. We have three kids and, and nine grandchildren, and they all love it here. It's been a very special spot for our family uh, for all these years, and. I hope, I just hope somehow we can try to keep it. Russell Broad had been fighting all summer to save his camp. Every weekend, he pounded snow fencing into the beach. Every high tide, the waves knocked it down faster than he could put it back up. Russell was bitter about the situation. You know, I've got roughly a quarter of an acre left that's not in underwater at high tide, give or take, so. And I used to have 3.6 acres. Yeah. <laughs> we'll keep our fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> In September, the remnants of Hurricane Noel slammed into Cape Cod. It came up, it pushed our house probably about 60 feet. It, there's a garage yeah. there, and the garage was already kind of buried in the sand. Do you have any idea how much you were losing the beach during those early years? In the early years, not as much. It started building, uh, it's, we started losing it probably a, a good 20 years ago. And then of course this, this summer alone, we probably lost 150. Right. Yeah. I mean, it just since the break happened, it just yeah. has just yeah. crawled right in and chewed right off. Right. Russell Broad had lost all five of his buildings. The poignant remains of the two camps were strewn for hundreds of yards up and down the wave-swept beach. Donald Harris described the loss of the Seymour camp that had been in his family for almost a hundred years. There on our front lawn, is, or where that sand is was our front lawn. It's now, what, five or six feet of water over it. And uh, so the whole part of our life is gone. There's no question about it. A 
few weeks later, we visited the next camp. It was not a particularly stormy day, but each wave was tearing several feet of sand from beneath the camp. Wave by wave, the ocean tore the stairs off the camp and toppled an outhouse that floated beneath the structure and ended up in Pleasant Bay. The following day at low tide, the camp was still standing on its spindly pilings, but 20 feet of sand had been swept from beneath the camp in only two short days. The camp had to be demolished a few days later. In January, Kevin Eldridge was on the snowy beach as the Batty camp was being washed by high waves. He filmed as one of the side buildings washed out to sea. Today, the inlet continues to move. It has migrated more than a half a mile north, sweeping away an entire village in a year and a half. This is the toll of sea level rise. For the Coastlines Project in Woods Hole, I'm Bill Sargent.